most fitting in your celebrations that you remember with pride and thankfulness the men and women who founded this community and this congregation. We praise God for their faith, for their labors. And our personal greetings and our best wishes as you celebrate the 75th anniversary of Bekevar Presbyterian Church and of the Bekevar community. But this community and this congregation are indeed a wealthy community. And I don't mean that in the terms that the world measures, but I mean that in terms of things that cannot be bought, in terms of the heritage that you possess as Hungarian Canadians and the contribution that you can make to the church in this province and to the whole community surrounding you. Once upon a time, there were Indians here and many buffalo. Then the white man came and slaughtered the buffalo and put the Indians on reservations. The first settlers from Europe called it the Big Emptiness. But the land was good and people kept coming from many countries. Those that settled the huge scattered farms in this area were Hungarians. Now, many of their descendants have moved into town, and you might not know that Hungarians live here, but there is an old man who paints his fence red, white, and green, the colors of Hungary. Some people said, you should not do that. You are in Canada now, not Hungary. <laughs> Remove the paint or the police will come and arrest you. But I didn't pay any attention. After all, I was here when Canada was only beginning. Since the beginning, the music has changed. These are wealthy wheat farmers. Their melody is Hungarian, but the rhythm is closer to country western music. It was in the 40s when the farmers began to move into town. Kipling is 50 years old, named after the English writer Rudyard Kipling. No one remembers why. The making of snail noodles is unique to Kipling. This old custom is dying out even in Hungary. But as in the early days on the remote farms, it's still a good excuse for women to get together. This came from Hungary. It's a long time ago. This was my grandmother. It's around about 80 years old. In here? How many pounds of rice did you get to this? 16. It's going to be a three-day celebration. They're cooking for 700 people, and cabbage rolls will attract a lot of people from neighboring communities. This is a Hungarian celebration and a Canadian holiday. For three days, all of Kipling is in a festive mood. Thank <laughs> you. 
smallest commotion is about three men, Joseph Sakac, Aaron Sakac, and Yano Sabo. They walked 40 miles from the nearest railway station to find land that was still unoccupied. They found it here and decided to stay. That was 75 years ago. They've been remembered every year since. Well, it's beautiful for us to come back, come here and see everybody from the And, and awful change, isn't it? Yes. Oh, at that time that you was here and the time now. Well, the great change. Yes, it's good reminiscing. Good to remember, indeed. Yes, it is. Beautiful. What do you find in a prairie museum? A few wall hangings brought from the old country, medicine bottle, utensils, an old Bible, and that piece of paper that changed the immigrant peasant into a landowner. When the community was rather isolated, then it was single culture, it was Hungarian culture. Most of the activities had centered around the church. And of course the leadership was within the church. They had yearly events. We had the Hungarian picnic or the Bekevar picnic. And it was always sort of an anniversary of the first pioneers because the first pioneers arrived here on the 20th day of July. And it was 75 years today that they had arrived. The Hungarian picnics have always been popular. Goulash is an old favorite and so are cabbage roll. But there are other things such as German veal cutlets, American fried chicken, Ukrainian buns, English salad, turkey and stuffing. After supper, the Hungarian dance group is the highlight of the evening. But the music comes from a tape recorder and the dancers from Calgary. In Kipling, there aren't any young people in these days who can dance like this. The real celebration takes place here, seven miles from Kipling. For 60 years, this Presbyterian church was the heart of the scattered Hungarian community. It was a place of worship, a social club, and a piece of the old country all rolled into one. The pioneers called it Bekavar, Fortress of Peace. In 1967, they built a new church in Kipling, and this one became an historic site. So when it comes to remembering the early days, they can do it only here, in Bekavar. The Hungarian national anthem is a prayer for peace and prosperity, for the people have suffered enough throughout the centuries. Only the pioneers knew the meaning of the words. Yet they missed the old country, and they talked about it so much on the Canadian prairie that today, even the third generation knows the story.
This is where the story of Bekovar begins, in Hungary of the turn of the century. The immigrants came from an area with very rich soil, but most of the land was owned by a few hundred families and a church. A million small farmers had no more than an acre or two of their own. For millions more, there was no land at all. The peasants had been serfs only two generations before, but now the sharecroppers and the hired hands were no better off than serfs. At harvest time, work began at three in the morning and rarely finished before sundown. Lunch was often no more than a piece of bacon with a raw onion. The peasants protested against their hard life only in fairy tales and folk songs. If just once I could become a thunderbolt, I would strike the palace of the barons. I would strike the barons feasting inside, so they'd stop tormenting the poor peasants outside. Those hard days are remembered today in a bilingual service at the old Bekovar church. Here is gathered, O Lord, from all parts of the world, a segment of thy people to sound the silent bells. Bless this people that came here, for they came burdened with the weight of the past, the cares of the present, and the fear of the future. We would fain like to triumph, but we are so puny and weak. We are torn away from thee, O Lord, and torn away from the ancestral soil. Those who were torn away from the ancestral soil at the turn of the century escaped the devastation of two world wars, three revolutions, eight different political systems, and three collapses of the currency. The Bekovar pioneers left at a time when Hungary was rich and powerful. In 1896, the country was celebrating its 1,000th anniversary.
The aristocracy, the landowners, and the emerging middle class were confident, jubilant, and smug. The celebration lasted the whole year. But the poor farmers and landless peasants had nothing to celebrate. Thousands had left the farms for the factories hoping to save up money to buy land. But there was no land even for money. So they stayed in the cities and became unskilled workers, domestic help, street cleaners, railway porters, streetcar conductors, mailmen, janitors, policemen. Those who still wanted land had to emigrate. By 1914, a million and a half people had left Hungary. Those who came to Canada were attracted by the prospect of 160 acres of free land. The most desirable immigrant at the time was a stalwart peasant in a sheepskin coat, born on the soil, with a stout wife and half a dozen children. The government encouraged immigrants of the same language and religion to stick together so they could help each other to cope with the initial hardships. More than two million people came to the prairies from all over Europe. They built towns with names like New Stockholm, New Finland, Amsterdam, Leipzig, Shamrock, St. Alphonse, Odessa, Tarnopol, Esterhazy, Bekavar, It's just like if a, if a person would say a story that uh, they say that couldn't be, but that that was true. Because a lot of, well, there's not very many of us that remembers it, because they all died, older people. Only myself and three or four more that living yet from those days. At the time when my dad and, and uh, six uh, families moved uh, down to the back of our district, in 1900, there was no Saskatchewan. It was the Northwest Territories. They picked out six uh, homesteads, the six of them. And then the next year they came down and they even wintered here. Just imagine in a prairies with sod roofing gone and log. We often were cold, you know, at nights and they put everything on us. And then I remember my mother crying a lot. At that time I thought that something might be wrong and, and I asked her and she said no I have a uh, bad headache and that's why I'm crying so she missed the old country and uh, all their relatives it was only my dad here at that time the closest town was 40 miles away from here and travel with horses well that was impossible in the winter time well, I remember when my mother had to go out and look for wild duck eggs. There was a lot of prairie chickens, so we made a snare for it. And we got a hold of a trap and we trapped them. We had good paprikash out of it. <laughs> Take your Later on the next year, they uh, got a hold of a horse and a cow, a milking cow. My dad hooked them up in a team like to uh, turn over the sod with them the first acre that he had to plow up. I 
remember the first year when I went to school. I had a hard time because I couldn't talk a word English, and the teacher asked something. Well, he, had, he had to uh, show us what he meant. But he had to sit down beside us and explain, and word by word. But the next year was much easier, and we knew a few words, and we put it together, and everything went fine after that. There's supposed to be an English school in, inside, but whenever we got out of the out of this door here, then it was a Hungarian schoolyard. Because <laughs> everybody talked Hungarian. We came to this country, and all the Hungarians went to the farm. See? And different people didn't go to farm. They go on a railway, and their children go to school. And today, those people are leaders in Canada. And the Hungarian generation left on a farm for a while. But Douglas, you know, you know Douglas? No. Well, that old preacher, you know, he, he, he twisted up everything and and uh, he brought the schools, he brought the schools into towns and everything, and it'll mix up the people. And as soon as that mix mix up came along, you know, what happened? Our kids go to university, every one of them. You can find any any young young Hungarians anywhere for about 15 years. Educated, educated. They just hate the pioneers. They just hate the pioneer spirit. That's what we heard from our mothers and fathers all the time. And you know, it, it, it was poured into us so much that we even thought that, oh, we were special people. Nobody else could be as, as, as smart as the Hungarians. But you know, that changed because when I, I was only 16 when I got married and then I was beginning to associate with other nationalities and I found out that I could learn a lot from them. So in a way this was a little bit wrong from our parents to install in us all that nationalistic view. If supposing we had a dance at, uh, at the back of our old back of our hall, well, the, anybody that would come in from, let's say, the, the north, well, they'd have to possibly wear a couple of guns to come in, or vice versa. <laughs> I wouldn't put it that. That's an exaggeration. There were no guns. <laughs> but, but there was a, a bit of a cleavage. It was territorial <laughs> privilege that <laughs> they had here. Yeah, but there were no great fights. They kept uh, decently uh, away from each other. This was in the when the first generation were growing up and they did they had suspicions of one another on the english side we had they had the same feeling too no we were honkies we weren't as civilized as they were after the young people grew up and our boys and girls beginning to you know marry into each other families it brought about a certain understanding, and I think that's what makes this town really what it is. Today they are celebrating their 75th anniversary. But by the time of the centennial celebrations, will the Hungarian language and culture be remembered in Kipling? Perhaps not. But the dreams of the first settlers have been fulfilled. The dreams of all landless peasants everywhere. I think particularly with rural people are, uh, who are so close to nature, they recognize possibly far more their dependence on the divine than uh, those who may be uh, in the harsh realities of factory life where the, it appears that it is man who does everything. I think you probably sense that at the service today that there is something here that is, is, you cannot describe, you feel, you have to be there to experience it.
they were hard days, very hard days. I can remember back that uh, my mother cried a lot and I didn't know what was wrong with her. She always said her head was aching, but it was something else that bothered her, out in a strange country and left all the relatives at home. But uh, those pains are going away as, uh, as the time goes by. We often talked about it after that she wouldn't go back to live in Hungary anymore. She was so satisfied out here. Yeah. 